Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Survival where in between episodes I've been doing a lot of AFKing at the new gold farm. As you can tell from my 576 levels. Pretty much any time I was here at my PC not playing Minecraft I had that thing running. So I've got a lot of gold but I haven't checked how much. Okay so like all of the chests, pretty much, <laughs> at least like half of them are full up of gold nuggets. Okay, I better start crafting this into gold blocks. I can think of no better way to start off an episode than getting carpal tunnel. This is gonna take ages. Well, I am finally done, but I am not going to be showing you how much gold I got. At least, not just yet. Instead, I want you to leave your guesses down in the comments below. And the only hint I'm going to give you is that the amount of gold blocks fit inside of a single shulker box. So how much gold in block form do you think this farm dropped whilst we were getting 576 levels? At some point in the rest of the video, I'm not going to tell you when, but I'll put in a very quick clip of actually opening up the shulker box, then you'll know the actual answer. So no cheating. Don't go scrubbing through the video. You're probably not going to find the answer. Just put in your best guess and continue watching. Anyway, let's head back to the overworld and do some building because I've got a pretty fun project in mind for today. When I'm at a loss for what to do with an episode or a build in general, something I really like doing is just flying around my world and letting the ideas come to me that way. So I just look for a piece of terrain that sparks my interest and I think, what could I build there? And that is exactly what happened with today's episode. Also, we have a cat just sat on top of Nether Donkey's grave. Kind of disrespectful if I say so myself. Welcome to what will eventually become a thriving pirate settlement, all built within the confines of this sparse jungle. At least that's the plan. And it's not something we're going to be doing all in today's episode, of course. This is a bit of a more long-term project. In today's episode, we're just going to be tackling the cove, this general area here. And my plan is to build something that kind of tells a story. The way I'm envisioning this whole project is that once upon a time, a group of pirates crash landed on these shores here and were left stranded with nowhere else to go. And so they just built their civilization here in the jungle. So I want to try and build that happening here in Minecraft. The one idea I have that I know hopefully should look pretty cool is some sort of crash ship. And I think that's maybe a good starting point for the episode here. So I've got a ship designed in creative mode. I'm going to build it here in survival and then crash it into a rock. I know realistically the ship would probably not stay looking as pristine as it does. It would probably be sunk to be completely honest and flooded at least, but that's kind of hard to build in Minecraft. Especially because we would have to probably go on multiple Y levels and on this small of a scale just doesn't really work. So I'm going to pretend that this rock kind of just pierced the hole in the ship and kept it there, <laughs> totally lodged in place. Believe it or not, I actually want to do quite a bit of custom terraforming and landscaping over here in this area. Elsewhere in my world, I've done some of that, but really, really simple, like over at my survival base area in the mountain there. I've done some custom terrain, you just can't really tell <laughs> because it looks like it's part of the generation. That's kind of the point with that one. But over here, I want to go a bit more in depth. So these two protrusions are a little taste of what the whole of this area is going to look like. Thankfully, it's kind of small, so I don't mind doing some detailed terrain. And you know what? I think that's going to be the next thing I tackle, completely overhauling all of the terrain in this general cove area. <laughs> Oh, 
terraforming complete and it's looking pretty cool if i do say so myself took a little bit of time that's for sure but definitely worth it in my opinion. My main issue with terraforming like this, doing these super detailed bits of terrain, is there's no good way to stop doing it, <laughs> other than trying to slowly transition out of it, which is kind of what I've been doing on the edges here. Because obviously you have to put a stop to it at some point, otherwise you're just gonna custom terrain the entire world, which doesn't sound very fun. So you kind of need to draw a line somewhere and do your your best to make it as gradual as possible so it doesn't just seem like this steep and sharp cutoff point. That's yet just another reason why I like doing the simple terraforming style of imitating the Minecraft terrain as it is. But I do quite like it on a small scale for a little build like we have over here. I'm not going to talk about everything I've done here because I recently made a video on my channel last week, in fact, where I kind of went over some of my terraforming and landscaping tips and tricks in the most simple way possible. So if you want to know what my thoughts are on all of this, go check out that video. Before we get started on some more building, I would just like to show you guys the comparison between how this looks now and how it looks before we got started. So here is the before. And here is the after. Quite the transformation, isn't it? Okay, I need to head back home and grab some more supplies because right now I have nothing but terraforming blocks on me which are not going to come in handy for the rest of the video because we are done as far as that's concerned. Before we head back, I do have one quick thing to show you guys which is this. 1,681 gold blocks. Pretty crazy, right? So yeah, those were the drops from the gold farm to get us to 576 levels, which I am very happy with. That is probably enough gold for the duration of this world. I don't think I'm going to need much more than that. Well, we're back at home base, and honestly, I don't really know what supplies I need. You see, this is one of those builds that I haven't planned at all, other than the ship that we built in the beginning. Other than that, I honestly have no idea what I'm going to make. I've got a few ideas, but I don't know what blocks I need, so I'm just going to gather up a whole range of different items that hopefully will come in handy, and I'll take them back over there. Um, sure, that'll do. Thankfully, it's not far of a flight back, so I can always come back home and grab some more things. And here we are back again. Let's start placing some of these blocks. We're not done yet, don't worry, I am going to be building some more. I thought I'd just give you a quick progress update before I go any further. So we've got some palm trees, as you can see. This zooms in way too far. <laughs> we've got five palm trees dotted around with some cocoa beans slash coconuts on them. We've got a small campfire over there with some seats, and just next to it we have something roasting over the fire then, using the quartz as some kind of meat block. And then just to the right of it, we have the treasure dig site, which you can't really see that well from up here. So let's crash into it. There we are. So as you can see, we got the buried treasure map out here on display, lantern lighting it so you can see what's going on. And obviously the pirates have made a start digging for this buried treasure. One of the ideas I have is a cage of sorts for prisoners. Something a little bit like this. Preferably not with me inside of it though. Now my first thought was a disarmed pillager. If you're wondering what I mean by that, it's basically when you disarm a pillager. You get it to shoot you enough times with its crossbow and eventually it will break, then it just kind of sits there doing nothing. The only trouble with that is I have pillager patrols deactivated in this world, so if I want to get my hands on a pillager, I have to go and find an outpost. And if I can't see it from all the way up here, directly above the beach, I don't really want to bring it all the way over here, so maybe something else. My second thought was then a villager. The only thing is, I kind of wanted to use the villagers as pirates around here. So you know there's one of the professions, I want to say it's the weaponsmith, where they have the eye patch. 
Is that not just the perfect pirate right there? So eventually we could place down a bunch of grindstones, assuming that's the right workstation, and get ourselves a bunch of eye-patched villagers, who can then act as the pirates, meaning we get in prison another type of villager. One without an eye patch. So I'm not going to worry about moving in every villager today, if we even choose to do that. If I do, it'll be at a later stage when I'm kind of done with this area and I won't have to worry about their lives every time the sun sets. So just for today, I think we'll go and find ourselves a villager who we can trap in this cage. Real quickly, let's just grab a potion and a golden apple from my villager trading hall. Thank you and thank you. Now we wait. Not getting much luck from just staying at the top of the crow's nest. I might actually have to get up and do something. Hey, hey, look what we have here. Admittedly, kind of far away from the beach, but it's okay. The night has only just begun. We should be able to get over there in time. The wandering trader is having a bad time. <laughs> He's running for his life. Down here. Hello. There we are. I'm just preparing his crate. Or <laughs> No, let's be honest. It's a cage. That's what he's getting into. Okay, uh, what is the best way to do this? I have no idea. Maybe do that? No, that that just went poorly. That went really bad. I, I'm not good at this. Hang on, let's try this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Come round, come round. That works. Yep, come on, right across like that. Oh, no, no. Let's try that once more. I just got to be a bit quicker. Ugh. Nope, one and two. Oh. No, 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 just wait. No. <laughs> One, two. Oh, come on. One, two. Yes. Oh, finally. Let's trap him in. But first, let's chuck this at him and feed him that. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to run to cover and try not to let him die. So much effort just for one decoration. Let's be honest. That's all he is. No, 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 no. Nope, 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 not happening, not happening, not happening, not happening. Oh my goodness, let me... <sighs> These waterloggable blocks are the worst. Oh, okay, he's fine, he's fine. Turns out you can burn through a trap door, so that's nice to know. I'll take that back, thank you very much. He's got a slab above him. He should be safe now, albeit probably at half a heart. But hey, that just makes it even more realistic, right? And he is cured. Free from the curse and can now live a long, prosperous and happy life in his new place of residence. Also, I've never seen this skin before. In my entire time playing Minecraft, admittedly I don't do much with villagers, but I've never seen this outfit before. Let me know if this is new to you guys too. The episode is nearing that time once again, and we still have a fair amount of stuff left to do. So to save on time here, I'm going to do it all off camera, and I'll update you afterwards. Some changes have been made around here, so let me go around and show you what I've actually done. Although, from up there, you can probably already tell. I've added in another small hut up here on the ledge, equipped with a potato garden. We've got a few bits of storage dotted around. These barrels and crates even have a little crafting table next to it. We've got some seats just behind that, which I'm not sure I like the look of. I may end up getting rid of them, but they're a good placeholder for now. I've made a small fishing dock over here, reaching out into the ocean. And last but not least, I've made a few rock pools over here by our caged villagers. These are super cute. There's just one final thing I want to add in, which actually requires me going to the nether. Also, look at my shadow. It's very weird. It's cut off where I have those sandstone slabs. <laughs> How strange. I am in need of a wither skeleton skull. Hey, hey, there we go. That did not take long at all. This is a really good fortress. So I needed this skull in order to make this banner pattern so that I could make this banner. The classic pirate flag of the skull and crossbones. Just for now, I think I'm going to have one on this house and then we've got two on the boat over there. Other than that, it may be overkill, but we've got more if needed. Let's just have one more over here. These pirates, they need to mark their territory. Okay, everybody, before we end off today's episode, I just have one quick thing I want to show you. 
It does require a bit of a costume change, so just bear with me here whilst I go into this hut and try and sort myself out. Uh, just zip this up. Oh, ow, my skin. Ow, that hurt. Oh, my, my poor little skin. Um, okay, do my buttons, and uh, yeah. All right, this feels snug. Okay, here we go. Ta-da! How do you guys like this? Now, first things first, this is not my new skin. I'm probably not going to be changing into this character. I'm far too attached to my original one. But a wonderful viewer by the name of Hugo made this for me, and it's really, really nice. So I kind of just wanted to show you guys and, uh, yeah, show it off in a video. Because if I didn't have my current skin, the one I'm usually using, I would probably use this because I really quite like it. Especially the outfit. The outfit's really snazzy. I'm kind of tempted to make like a combination between this skin and my current one, but we'll see. But yeah, Hugo probably worked very hard on this skin, so I just wanted to give it the recognition it deserves. Like I said, most likely won't be changing, far too attached to my original skin, but we'll see. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Just looking at myself right now, it, it feels weird. <laughs> it probably does to you guys too. But thank you ever so much, Hugo, for making this. Thank you to you guys for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed and that you're looking forward to next episode where we're going to be doing some more piratey related things. So thank you for watching and bye for now.